everybody, it is Quickend, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually going to be doing a favorites video. I know that it is like, I don't know, like the 15th. I know it's like pretty deep into the month for me to be doing like a monthly favorites video, but lately I've been putting a lot of thought into the things that I really enjoy, so I thought that this would be cool. You know, every day I've kind of been adding to this list, and although it says June favorites on it, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like the state of mind I've been in, but lately, like the littlest things, I'm like, I appreciate this and I want to share this. None of this is going to be sponsored content. I mean, every time I do a monthly favorites video, I'm like, give this video a thumbs up if you want me to keep doing these and I'll do another one in four months when I remember. Um, but yeah, this is something I do want to get into the habit of doing. I'm sorry, I don't have AC in my bedroom, but this is where I like to film, so a little bit of tank top action here, but yeah, let's jump in. I wanted to, I'm going to be talking about kind of like music and TV shows I liked and movies as well as like tangible things. So in this last month, I mean, it came out, I think on the 28th of June, so just missing a June kind of favorites realm was the movie Ocha. So Ocha was, um, I didn't even know that this movie was coming out. It has like pretty heavy like vegan undertones and you guys actually recommended it to me. You like hit me up on every social platform like did you watch Okja? So I was like, I don't even know what this is. I'm so scared to take Netflix recommendations. What if I watch 10 minutes of it and hate it? <laughs> so I actually watched it with a friend and it was so good from beginning to end. So if you are somebody who is sensitive to like vegan content in the least, I don't know if you would like it, but I mean, it has a good cast. Jake Gyllenhaal is in it. The movie premise is, you know, it takes place almost in a, it takes place like now, I guess, but they are creating like G genetically modified animals. So they kind of create this like super animal and they give them to farmers all across the world to raise this super animal and kind of, I guess, like parade it around, make it seem like more organic, like it was raised on a farm, although it's like a genetically modified animal. So the movie takes place in a couple places, but they show a spotlight on a girl in Korea who is raising one of these like GMO, genetically modified animals, like a type of pig kind of thing. And you see that the animal is like really intelligent, really smart, loves its owner, loves and like has a full understanding of like where it is on earth. Like you fall in love with this beast right away. Um, and then it kind of just shows, I guess, like a little bit of a spotlight on factory farming and what goes into, you know, the future of if there are genetically modified animals, what would happen if they were created with the intention of being consumed. But it's cool, there's like a little ALF spotlight in there and I had no idea when I clicked play that I was about to watch this like heavy animal advocacy undertone movie. And like I said, it kind of takes a lot for me to like press play on Netflix. Like I'm more comfortable scrolling than committing to a movie. But I really did like this, so much so it's in the favorites. You know, a couple people messaged me and asked me how I felt about it. I cried, I was screaming, I was talking back to the screen. Lots of emotions. Jillian Hall, you were, you made me feel weird. But I forgive you. So the other series that I ended up watching, and I literally just finished it yesterday, was Handmaid's Tale. So I didn't know I would like Handmaid's Tale. I think it came out in May. Um, I still worked at my salon and I know a lot of people were like, we're watching Handmaid's Tale, but it's scary, it's creepy. And I was like, oh no, like I can't even watch Walking Dead. Did you say scary? I'll skip it. So I wasn't going to watch it, didn't think twice about it. And then I went to my PO box and I got a letter. And in the letter, um, one of you guys said that you had read the book Handmaid's Tale and that it was your favorite book and that you were nervous about watching the series. And I was like, huh, someone liked the series so much that they recommended it to me on pen and paper. Like, I should really check it out. So I started the series and it was pretty scary. Like, 
a little unnerving and there was something about it though I really really liked and I think like the undertone I'm sure it's been analyzed for from people who are far more educated than me but although it was really scary the sense of like camaraderie amongst the women kind of like kept me going so I really like that feeling I mean I do like work in a salon world where women come together and work together and I just kind of felt a lot of that in the story. Yes, it's scary. It takes place almost now, but in a like dystopian kind of future. And those are the movies and stuff I really love. Like, although The Walking Dead is really, really scary to me, I do like that's almost my favorite kind of sci-fi that like the world is ending. Look at all this shit. That's my favorite genre. I think dystopian future is literally a genre genre but I really like that too uh you know watch it with a grain of salt I suppose watch it with a friend um because there were parts of it where I was like I'm freaked out but then the cast every cast member is such a babe I swear they introduced the character Nick and I was like <laughs> I'm never turning this off so if you're scared at least there's some major eye candy in the show Woo! So going into tangible things, so this last month I've got a lot of questions about my reusable mug and I know I'm literally drinking iced coffee out of a plastic cup right now, but forget about that. That has its own story. So I have been using this reusable mug and I get a lot of questions about it and honestly, um, this was kind of inspired, I was watching the YouTube channel, um, oh, I've, off the top of my head I forget, but it's this girl who like creates like almost no waste, and I was watching it, and I was just like, oh, like, wish that was me. And I was thinking, you know, I, I use like all tote bags, reusable bags, I like plastic bags, I try not to use ever, like if I forget my tote bag, I will hold whatever object I have. Philly loves a plastic bag. Like, if you go to the, the corner store to get a pack of gum, they're putting it in a bag for you, and you're like, don't. Um, and when I worked retail, I was really that person who was like, do you need a bag? Do you need one? Are you sure? Uh, I'll go get you one. I don't even keep them over here. <laughs> like, um, so my friend gave me this reusable cup. This is from a store in my neighborhood that's like an odds and ends store um I don't like maybe like a dollar plus kind of store so you will have to do some research to find a reusable cup that you really like but I like this one it has the plastic straw that like won't come out of the lid and with mine you can like take off this like body part and for children, you know, you could write, like, Happy Mother's Day or something on here. But I just used, um, I just cut out some images that I really liked and I thought were, like, romantic. Like, look at those hands. Are you serious? And this is actually just clippings from a book on, like, teaching you how to dance. Because before the internet, you had to learn how to dance and, like, hold hands via this book. So I just thought like if this was really cute and something I love to see, I would reach for it more often and that's definitely the case. I fucking love this thing. It comes with me everywhere. Um, and I got some questions that was like, you know, don't you feel embarrassed going to the coffee shop and giving them this cup? And like literally I do. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I do feel weird all the time. But some places will offer you a discount if you bring your own reusable cup. I know if you live near Starbucks, Starbucks has pretty good plastic, like, iced coffee cups. And then in the winter, I have a ton of, like, hot cups, but right now I'm all iced coffee, baby. So I just, like, rinse this out when I'm done with it. Even near my job, there's a place that does free refills. So, you know, pay for the first cup, get a discount because you bring your own cup, get a free refill. It's been cool. And then when I'm done with this, I just, like, rinse it out dry it and throw it in my purse um it's hard it's definitely a hard transition and obviously like it's not a perfect system if someone brings you a coffee 
but I just feel like it's a good step. So on that kind of like notion, I know this is really weird to add to a monthly favorites, but literally here we go. So I have been hand washing a ton of my stuff lately. I was reading this like self-help, like 10 tips for self-help and it was kind of like a, an aggressive approach, which I really like am into. It was like, girl, make sure you do this. And I was like, I'm listening. So one of the things on the like 10 self care kind of things was to hand wash all of your underwear. And it said hand wash your underwear so it doesn't mix with the rest of your laundry and that keeps it cleaner. And I guess I understand that. I don't exactly know what goes on in the washer and dryer, but they said that if you hand wash your delicates, it keeps them out of bacteria so much so. And I guess that makes sense. I mean, would I want my jeans with my underwear if there is like a, a notion that they're not getting completely clean? I don't exactly know. This was a list on Tumblr. But I started hand washing, you know, my underwear and bras and my socks. And then that kind of turned into me hand washing like a shirt that I wore and then the next day I could wear it again. And if you've seen me wearing like the same shirt five days in a row, like yeah I'm not cleaning it every single day. But there was kind of this feeling of like hand wash your stuff when you're done with it, like physically wash, like watch the dirt leave your object and then hang it up in the shower to dry. I like that. I can't do it with everything. Like, I don't have a washer and dryer in my apartment. I would have to go to the laundromat. So it's kind of interesting to me to watch, like, what clothes hold more value to me and what clothes I, like, immediately want to wear all over again versus, like, wear something, put it in the laundry. Wear something, put it in the laundry. Go to the store and buy something new, wear it, put it in the laundry, and then a month later I have a ton of fucking laundry. So I don't know if any of this makes sense but I do like hand washing my stuff and it has been interesting and so much so it's in my monthly favorites. I hand wash some of my t-shirts, but I hand wash all my stuff with Dr. Bronner's. So what is really magical about Dr. Bronner's, I talk about this stuff a lot, um, it's kind of a Castile soap that can do literally everything. Um, this is my laundry Dr. Bronner's. If I'm going to use this on me, um, I have a separate bottle where I put a little bit of this in and then I dilute it with water and that's what I would use for my face or like my armpits, you know, my body. Um, but this one is just for hand washing clothes. So it's really cool. Um, there's a window in my shower so you guys out there, you might have to like line dry your clothes if you're in like a more urban environment like me, put some, putting your clothes near an open window. Um, or you might have a backyard, my old house did. So I will just like literally get some, I will like, if I'm washing the sock, I'll get it wet, put Dr. Browner's on it and kind of like scrunch it up and then I'll let it sit for a little while and then I'll rinse it. And if it looks like a lot of like dirt or like color or whatever is coming off of it, I'll do it one or two more times. And I do all that with my underwear and my t-shirts and stuff and it's been pretty cool. I feel like this kind of notion will keep me from buying too many clothes. Like when I lived in my like previous previous house we also didn't have a washer and dryer and I felt like it put me in a habit where I would buy and consume clothes more often because I knew that I didn't have like anything to wear at home. And I wasn't doing this like consciously like fuck the earth, I'm going to Forever 21. It was kind of just like, oh shit, I'm going out tonight and I know the clothes I want to wear aren't clean. Um, so this has been kind of cool. Like, you've definitely seen me wear this Cure t-shirt a hundred times this last month and it's brought to you by washing my clothes in my fucking bathtub. What am I talking about? Segue into the clothing that I've been wearing. So I've been really, really into band and like concert t-shirts lately and it's kind of cool because for a while I was like super into band t-shirts and then I got out of them for maybe like two years I was like I just want to wear a a dusty white shirt forever getting back into band t-shirts has been kind of cool 
I have been a really big, like, um, sentimental clothing person, like, the last couple months. Like, clothes that make me feel good because they have sentimental value. And that has been a big thing for me. And I feel like that does coincide with, like, the music I like and the music that is making me feel good currently. And isn't that why we buy band t-shirts? Sure. But I have been listening to The Cure non nonstop and I feel like a a heightened sense of value wearing a Cure t-shirt while I'm also like only consuming their music and whatever I'm going through emotionally listening to The Cure etc cetera, etc cetera, I don't know I just feel really safe wearing this shirt and I, I don't know it kind of, like, I definitely, like, will feel weird if I'm, like, listening to it in my headphones and also wearing the shirt at the same time. Like, don't get me wrong. I feel weird constantly. But I got this shirt, and what I really like about these band t-shirts is I have, like, a Morrissey shirt that I've had for the longest time. You guys have seen it. And it has a bunch of holes in it. So I really like the idea that that shirt is, like, very well-loved and it's apparent. So I actually, like, not gonna lie, put some of these holes in this shirt so I feel like I could speed up the process of loving this shirt so much. So distressed t-shirts, something I really, really like. Somebody clowned me for it the other day, and I was kind of just like, what is your problem? Yes, I cut holes in my shirt. What's the difference between the holes I cut and the holes that happen naturally in the Morrissey shirt? So... Don't talk to me, honestly, in the streets if you're so worried about the holes that I cut in my own shirt. Because I'm like, I have tattoos, and I'm a little rough and tumble to begin with. So a couple holes in the t-shirt, I like that. It's summer, whatever. So I just put some holes here and there. I'll just like snip them with scissors, and then um, as I wash them, I feel like they get bigger. So a couple snips here and there. I just love the smell of that soap. So, some shirts I've been wearing, um, this was my Cure t-shirt, Little Dead Kennedys, oh, they smell so good. I actually, so I have my Barnett Fair t-shirt that I got, uh, from working at Barnett Fair, and I like to wear all these shirts really oversized, um, I just feel safe in them, and so honestly, these are all, like, mediums and large in men's, uh, Josie talked me into getting a small in my Barnett Fair shirt, but, yeah, you know, a little cut, cut hole, wherever. I love these shirts, man. And you guys definitely saw me wear this shirt. I didn't cut these holes. <laughs> but I love this. I don't know. I love, like, I love destroyed shirts. I love distressed stuff. I'm not going to let anybody tell me about it. Because I think it's, it's, a di it's an interesting approach to wearing clothing. Why would I wear a straight-up regular t-shirt? Don't let anybody bother you. That's all I'm gonna say. So, if you saw me wearing these shirts over and over and over again, hand wash your favorite fucking shirts and cut holes in them. It'll make you feel better. This last month, um, you guys went crazy on social media letting me fucking know that my prayers were answered with the shark fin soap. So, I picked up two of these. Ugh, and I was stoked to do so. This is from Lush. Um, they might still have them. I'm not sure. Like, the second somebody messaged me about this, I li I still worked at my other salon. I was like, um, one moment, please. I have an emergency. So these are great. This is kind of like, if you want to dupe for this, it's made of, like, seaweed and lemongrass, and it smells so good. So I just have this little bar in my shower. This one is kind of, like, for display. It has this little cardboard shark fin in there. Um that you really like can't get out because it goes all the way through the bottom so I'm just like washing myself and like this is like and I'm like hey whatever um so they might still have these if they do I think I would pick up another one but I'm not too sure I'm like trying not to live in excess too much really quickly I do want to talk about the music I've been listening to and like I said I've been listening to The Cure so some of you guys told me well ask me like where do you start I've been listening to The Cure, like, casually for a couple years, and then in the last couple month, like, weeks, like, dove right in, it's the only thing I'm listening to. So, definitely, definitely check out Disintegration, it's one of their albums. I listen to everything through Apple Music, 
not a plug. That's just what I use. Um, so I'm sure that these albums also exist on Spotify or where, however you consume music. Um, it might be more difficult to find these CDs because this music is from the 80s. So definitely check it out online if you can. Disintegration in its entirety is on YouTube. And the other album by The Cure I've been listening to is called Faith. So I, like I said, I listened to The Cure before, like a couple years ago, but I had never heard this album Faith before. You have to listen to Faith if you like, you know, 80s goth kind of music. If you, for one moment in your life, have ever listened to Morrissey and really like them, ever listened to, like, Depeche Mode and really like them, if you ever listened to Stone Roses, like, anything like that, I'm trying to think. Blouse is kind of a newer kind of band that's like that, Cold Cave. You have to check out The Cure, you have to listen to Faith. Um, I have this, like, remastered version of Faith that has the song Charlotte Sometimes on it. You have to listen to it. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is quietcoolkid. Um, in the last month, like, the only music that you can hear on any of my Instagram stories is this song. This, if you've heard this, like, so good so fucking good can't believe it exists and i'd never heard of it before so if you are a king cure fan and you never heard of faith don't even worry about it i'd never heard of it either so so fucking good literally that's all i have written down here for music the cure which is fine listen to the cure if you want to be sad feel good i feel so i don't know i don't want to sound like a freak but like, re-listening to them and, like, falling back in love with, like, consuming just one band's, like, discog has been really exciting for me. This last month, I have been really into zines. Um, if you don't know what a zine is, um, it is just an independent publication that you or, like, a small group of people make themselves, kind of just, like, it's not a book. But you can have a zine that's, like, bound like a book. Anyway, this last month I made my own zine and I've been talking about it for a while. So this is last week and I only made six of these. So if you feel like you didn't get one or there's not an opportunity for you to get one and you feel sad or upset, um, this was something I just really had to make and I really had to go, uh, go forth and make this thing. So I think... You know, I'm learning how to make zines, and I'm learning how to make things better, and you guys have been super cool. I've been getting a ton of zines sent to my P.O. box, and honestly, every single one has inspired me a different way or taught me something new. So, thank you guys so much. Um, so, I think once I get better and, like, really figure out, like, a method to this... Sorry, it's, like, messing up the white balance. I'll feel more comfortable, like, producing these for public consumption. So, um, a lot of people asked me a ton of questions about zines this last month after I made mine and I talked about it in my live stream. Um, so I would love to do a video all about zines as well. Um, I kind of just wanted to mention them really quickly. Um, someone said to do a zine collection video and, um, I think after I get some more solid ones in my collection, that might be something really fun. Zines sometimes are so personal though, like mine is pretty personal, so I don't know about the zine collection video, I'll think about it, because a lot of the zines in my collection happen to be graffiti zines or like street art zines, so um, I don't know, I'll have to think about it, but for the most part, I don't know, pretty stoked. So I just grabbed some off my shelf as a visual, I guess for like my thumbnail, but most of them are like from my king. Last month, Eva Stolansky, you know Eva, she is a big name on this channel, a great friend and creator of mine, a friend who is a creator, friend of mine, is a creator, a creative mind, whose presence is very known on this channel. Eva did all of the animations and graphics for the Stranger Things lookbook. You guys have seen it. Um, so Eva actually has a couple new things in her shop this month and if you haven't seen it she has a cow print long sleeve 
shirt, she has the pullover hoodie that I wear all the time, and she sent me some socks. So I have, I have the black ones still in the package, how she sent them. And then I have these white tube socks, they are so dope. So check out Eva, she is the best. And if you've always wondered where a lot of these like anamorphic, like cutie fruits and vegetables and cows and stuff are coming from, they are coming from Eva. So let's see, Ethan. I have like two more things on here that I want to talk about. The first thing is coffee. So my coffee recommendation, if you live in Philadelphia and maybe Reanimator has a website, is Reanimator. I have been going to Reanimator all the time. So a lot of people ask me questions about coffee, like the coffee I drink at home and stuff. And honestly, coffee is a pretty social thing for me. I like to go to coffee shops, try different coffee shops, like go with friends. It's kind of like, uh, is social drinker, can I say that with coffee? Um, so right now in my house, I have reanimator coffee. Um, they will grind it for you, whatever you need. I have this and my friend actually got me, there's, why would you sleep on this, Ethan? Damn it. My friend actually got me some reanimator pins. So those are really cool. So this logo was actually designed by True Hands, which is where I've gotten some of my tattoos. I have some videos inside of True Hands. The owner of True Hand, Mike Ski, is engaged to my mentor, Josie. It all comes together. So these reanimator pins are cool and I've been drinking reanimator coffee. I think their website would let you order coffee. And finally, oh yeah, I've been reading Clockwork Orange. It's hard to read. <laughs> Um, and then finally, big news, I am working at a new salon. I'm working hand in hand with my mentor, Josie, at Barnett Fair Salon in Old City. If you're ever passing through Philadelphia or you live here, Barnett Fair is a really awesome collective of women who are just doing very original and carefully curated hair cut and color. I stand by them 100%. Um, Josie and her mentor actually started the salon, so I feel I feel so close to her being there and being able to be with her. They pride themselves on education and being a small, very curated collective of people. And the building itself is really cool. Um, everything, you know, they kept a lot of the original integrity of the building, and the upstairs of the building is like a hotel. But it's this kind of like, I've never stayed in a, um, an Airbnb, but it's this really cool hotel where you like book it online and then you get like a code to unlock the doors online and you go into the hotel and it's, uh, I guess, person free. They have a little motto for it. Um, so if you're ever in Philadelphia, you could stay in the local hotel, get your hair done by Barnett Fair and grab one of these tote bags. I love this, and all this, all of their um, imagery was also designed by True Hands. It's a good, it's a good month for things that I like, honestly. Sorry if this was long, it's probably like five hours long. It, it's been a, a, a month of like a lot of growing and a lot of self-focus, so being able to celebrate like the little things that have like, I've really celebrated in the last month has been really cool. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I know it's like at mid-month and all over the place. Like hand washing your clothes is your favorite fucking thing. Yes, it is. Thank you everybody who watched the live stream. If you have questions that you feel like I haven't answered, I may have in a four hour live stream. I don't know. I wanna end this with saying friendship has been something that's been really important to me and something, you know, when you're going through it, you kind of recognize like who's there for you and who isn't. And honestly, you guys have really been here for me. And you guys really have built this community within each other where you do not let each other fall. And that is awesome and it's powerful and I wear it with me constantly. And it's kind of funny, like someone clowned me the other day for wearing a Quicken necklace and they were like, really, isn't that your brand? And I was like, listen, I am susceptible to people making fun of me and I'm the first person to discredit myself in the name of humor. But I was like, hey, this is important to me. 
And it is. It fucking is. So yes, people can make fun of me constantly, and I get it, and sometimes I love it. But not with this. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support all the time. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more monthly favorites. Subscribe if you haven't. Um, I make Instagram stories every single day, so you can follow me on Instagram if that's the kind of stuff you like. If you're a Snapchat person, that's kind of like what I transition over to. I love you. Listen to The Cure, watch Okja, and have a good fucking weekend. I don't know. It's Monday. <laughs> I love you guys. Until next time. Bye.